Now what we see on the graph here is till the time the drift velocity is in the range of E critical, it keeps on increasing linearly. But at a certain point of time, say when it reaches the E critical, which is nothing but 1.5 into 10 raised to 5 volt per centimeter, after this, the drift velocity of my couriers is saturated and it is fixed to 10 raised to 7 centimeter by seconds. Now, why does this happen and what exactly is happening here? Let's understand this in a bit more details. Now, technically, the drift velocity is given by Vd into mu into E lateral upon 1 plus E lateral. Don't please get intimidated by the equation. It's very, very simple upon L length of the channel into E critical. Now let's see what's happening on the transistor characteristics because of velocity saturation. Let's write the equation of the current in the transistor in saturation region. It's given by mu n cox by 2 w by l vgs minus vtn the whole square. Now this is what we have seen till date but the actual equation is a bit different. Let's see what is the difference. It also means that the equation also has a term 1 plus VGS minus VTN. The whole is divided by length into E critical. Again, don't get intimidated. We have already studied the equation of the current. Again, no derivation is expected. Mu n COX W by L VGS minus VTN the whole square and there's a factor of 2 which is divided. The only thing which is added here is that my VGS minus VTN square term is also divided or the numerator is also divided by a factor called 1 plus VGS minus VTN where VGS minus VTN itself is divided by the length of the channel into the E critical. Let's understand what's happening because of this. Let's quickly see. Let's rewrite the equation quickly here so that we understand what's happening. Let's write the equation of the current in the saturation region. ID sat is nothing but mu n COX by 2 W by L VGS minus VTN the whole squared. This is also divided by 1 plus VGS minus VTN upon L EC. L is nothing but the length of the channel and EC is nothing but E critical. Now the new term, let's scrutinize that term a bit more in depth, which is this one. Let's rewrite that term again. That is nothing but 1 plus VGS minus VTN upon L E C. Now, when we know that the length of the channel is normal, normal when I say it's not short, that means it's long. This term is going to be of a very, very small value in compared to one and hence can be easily ignored. So what we see here is if this term is ignored, we get our original equation of the current in saturation region when the channel is operating in its normal mode and it's not a short channel device. That's where we got this derivation of the current in saturation region. So this is quite understood. Now let's see what phenomena occurs when the length of the channel is very, very small or it's very, very short. That means it's in the denominator. So this entire term would be a higher value. The one which is circled, this term is going to be a higher value compared to one. And so in this case, one can be easily ignored. So now let's rewrite the equation. If one is ignored, just let's rewrite quickly the equation. So ID in saturation is equal to mu n COX by 2 W by L VGS minus VT and the whole square. Remember the one is ignored from the bottom because we just saw that the length of the channel is small, that this term is going to be very high comparable to one. So one can be ignored. So this is nothing but VGS minus VTN and we'll have an L and an EC, excuse me, I beg your pardon, will have length term going up. So is the electric field, critical electric field. Let's cancel out length. Let's cancel out one VGS minus VTN. This shows very clearly that the equation of current in saturation region is no longer dependent on the length of the channel. That's the reason the current can still flow and it's no longer a quadratic relationship on VGS minus VTN. It is a linear relationship now. So initially in the curve, we saw that if the transistor is in saturation region, it would follow a square law device, but it's not true. It will follow a linear curve because of a phenomena called as velocity saturation. Now this is the effect of E lateral on drift velocity. Let's see the effect of E vertical on drift velocity. Let's go ahead. 